when you want, when you want the record, it's much. When you want the record, dude. Okay, let me let me talk, man. When you want the record, you, you got to go before the original judge, okay? Because he's the one who passed sentence on you, okay? And then he gets to determine whether or not you comply with all the uh, the states or county statutes or federal statutes whether or not your record should be expunged, and he's going to deny you. He's going to say, no, I don't believe that you uh, put your time in. I don't think you put an honest effort in. I don't think that the record should be expunged. I think this should be lashed around your neck for the rest of your life. So you say to him, this is before. This is why you don't bother wasting your time getting the record expunged, because it's never going to happen. The judges, once they get in on your record, they're going to keep it on forever, because the next time you get in trouble, instead of a $100 fine for the first offense, it's going to be a $1,000 fine for the second offense. So obviously, they're not going to let you go back to the beginning. Obviously, it's a money-making thing, so obviously they're not going to let you out of the first conviction. They're not going to do it, because the conviction means that you confessed. It's all on you. You were the one who admitted it. Oh, now you're coming back and saying, well, gee, i got to change your heart. I, I don't want to confess to uh, uh, doing that wrong. I want to say, holy crap, you know what? I, I didn't do wrong to anybody. That's basically what you're doing. So what you could do, you could compare it with expunging the record. But you don't go in there and say, well, under Florida Statute 631, Section 257 of expunging the record, I comply with all state uh, demands made upon me in the terms and condition of pro. I did AA classes, I did parent classes, I did anger management, I did everything, and I need, I require you now to expunge the record. They're not going to do it. Even though did you comply with every single aspect of the terms and condition of the parole, they're not going to let you loose. They're not going to do it. Because it's a money-making thing. So what you got to do is you got to come at it from the from the common law point of view. You got to say, Ugh, who's the man or the woman who made the claim against me all those years ago? Back then, I was in, I was so incompetent, I actually I listened to an attorney, and uh, the attorney doesn't do anything in common law. The attorney does everything through legalese. For some reason, I entered into a legalese jurisdiction. Oh my God, what the hell was I thinking? I'm not competent to answer in legalese. I had to go hire somebody to do it for me. That's how incompetent I was. I had to have somebody represent me. That's how incompetent I was. Oh my God, what was I doing? I don't live in effing France. I realized, oh my God, I live in a common law land. Oh my God, what was I doing answering in legalese? What was I doing answering in Chinese? In a Japanese land, what the hell was I doing? That's what you got to go back and explain to them that you were so freaking incompetent. Look, I had an attorney. I was so fucking stupid. I actually thought I lived in a legalese land. Oh my God, what the hell was I thinking of? There you go. That's the kind of way the letters got to go. And if you.